welcome to another episode of our biblical series story and we're going to talk about the old testament and slavery so a uh, controversial topic especially in today's uh, climate and culture so i want to turn this over to brendan yeah you mentioned in the corresponding article to this video that slavery was an economic necessity in old testament times can you go more into that <clears throat> Well, a lot of people, you know, they look at the Old Testament and they see the laws and the regulations in regard to slavery. And as they look at those laws and they, those regulations, they're thinking, my goodness, how corrupt the Bible is. Uh, it should just rather say slavery is wrong. You should not have it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if it condones it or regulates it in any way, shape or fashion, then that makes the Bible an immoral book. Uh, what people don't understand is that, number one, the laws and the regulations regarding slavery were not in the way that we commonly think of it. We'll explain that. But they also need to understand that, that the Old Testament was written in an environment where slavery was everywhere. It's been around as long as recorded history. It's always been a pervasive institution and so even the Jews coming out of Egypt they came out as what slaves and ones that were very oppressed and but you have to understand why it was so common and pervasive is that when people worked their land they made an income they provided for their family they did so as small area farmers you know, they had a small tract of land that required everybody to work it, or the flocks or the crops or whatever. And that was their means of income. There was no other means. And so if they had a bad year or their crops didn't go well, what would they do? They would have to borrow uh, mm -hmm. crops or, or something from other farmers or other people. They're in debt. They had another bad year. They have to borrow again. They're in debt. And eventually they've got such a big debt that they can never pay it off. And so they're in a default position. And if you're in a default position, then you're going to uh, commit theft. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, what they would have to do is they would have to sell themselves in service to the people they were indebted to. But then they would have to try to work for them to pay off the debt. But in working for them, they could never get ahead to build their own land, their right. own property. And so because of that, there were developed an economic class that became slaves. Mm -hmm. And not only did they just buy their labor, but they owned the people themselves. And that's where sin and that's where the fallenness of humanity came in and made slavery, you know, uh, the evil, you know, that, that, that it is or came to be. Now, there were other forms that sometimes prisoners of war were made slaves mm -hmm. and different things like that. But that's why there was slavery is because there was no means to pay back a debt so you had to sell yourself to somebody and uh, and, and so the, the Old Testament is written in that kind of a background. That's why it's really important to know the cultural context of any document really you're reading before you right. before you say well this is horrible that's horrible the Bible is horrible you, you have to consider know. the what's going on in the background. Right, right. So you kind of mentioned in the article that God changed slavery to a voluntary debt service. Oh. And just to me, that doesn't sound a whole lot better, but maybe we can go into that a little bit more. Right. Well, it was an ingenious plan as I studied it, uh, because when you look at slavery in the Bible, it could be more understood as a debt service. And it was a debt service that kept uh, the Israelites from making a permanent slave class. Mm -hmm. So if they were in the situation to where they were, they owed somebody and they couldn't pay them back, and then they defaulted, uh, God set up a system where they were in a debt service, so that what they would, what the person would, would they would owe, who, who was their lender, they wouldn't own the person; they would just own their labor. This was voluntary; they could not force it. If they forced it, then uh, if anybody was forced into anything like that, they would be killed. Pretty strict. So that's very, you know, that's extremely different from a forced slavery like we, you know, know from the transatlantic slave trade or other things right. like that. 
Furthermore, that the debt service could only last for six years and no more. It had to be paid off in six years. They had to be lent. And then at the end of six years, the person who was the lender had to provide for the person working for them, the person in debt, resources and material goods and everything so that they could rebuild their lives so that they could get a fresh start. Also, at any point, if somebody was treated harshly in that debt service and they wanted to leave, they could go anywhere in the land of Israel and they could escape and flee, flee without any consequences. Uh, they were completely immune. So they could leave. They could, they could enter into it any time. They could leave at any time. And so what this did is it made a way to pay off your debt. But also at the end of that, you could then rebuild your, your lives. Mm -hmm. If God would have said, you know what, none of that, no debt service, none of that, anything. If, if you if somebody uh, owes somebody and they default, you know, don't, you know what the Israelites would have, they would have sold them on the slave market to other nations, which would have been a horrible evil. They would have perpetuated the evil of slavery. But what happened, because they had this type of system in place, there was not an economic underclass or a permanent economic underclass. Because of that, the the Israelites, you know, there were different levels of wealth, mm -hmm. but there was not an oppressive economic underclass, and thus not slavery or, like sometimes we see today in the world, people in just horrible, miserable conditions that they couldn't get out of. The Old Testament and the laws of God regarding debt uh, protected the Israelites from doing that. And God was very clear. He says, you were slaves in Egypt. You were sojourners. So therefore, even if somebody is sojourning and, you know, a foreigner in your own country, treat them well because you know what it's like to be a sojourner in another country. You were slaves. Now you're redeemed. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful picture. And so by the time of Jesus Christ, Israel was one of the nations that had no economic, permanent economic underclass. There were poor people, but not a whole class, you know, that was subjected to that. And that was distinct from most of the nations that were in the Roman Empire at that time. So this voluntary trip, this voluntary service was an example of God's divine foresight and his providence and his provision. He was saving these people from a much worse fate. Yes, these laws protected them and it, and it elevated people to a place of economic freedom that otherwise uh, would not have been experienced or seen because of God's you know, wisdom and his laws. So often when we read the word slave in the Old Testament, more often than not, would that be what the word slave is referring to? Yeah, debt service, and people just see the word slave you know, in some of the particular passages, and they just have an emotional reaction to it that comes from you know, the background you know, things they've seen in movies or what they've read or, you know, especially in, 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 you know, sensitive environments today with the topic, you know, in terms of our past as a nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the Old Testament in that light, you're completely missing the wisdom and the love of God and the, the brilliance of His laws. Right. This is something done for their protection, not for their harm or for human exploitation. Right. All right, well, thank you for joining me for another episode, Anthony. All right, thanks, Brendan. Thank you for joining Anthony and I today on the Biblical Story video series. Please subscribe to the Crossroads CCO YouTube channel, like, and share this video. Until next time.